episode 135 guys all right guys so we got a bunch of different motorcycle parts here blasted out gas to, uh, taped up but the focus is this uh, this is gonna be Kachow with uh, the numbers here gonna be in gloss black got some wheels and some other parts uh, for all you guys asking what my gun settings are this uh, program too and apparently 20 and then two again and there's program one all right here we go Hey, you guys remember to keep your mask in a box when you're not using it? I'm trying to. As you can see here in the corner, uh, I sped this up. I uh, figured you guys have seen me spray parts enough. Um, mostly just trying to figure out the best video style for you guys. Uh, I got a lot of people that like these kind of chill. Got the you know a little bit of music in the background with me kind of voiceover, doing a voiceover for whatever I'm doing at the time. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys like this style of video or some of my previous ones that are like really in depth and show a step by step process. I've been getting a number of messages from people who ask why I wiggle the gun the way that I do or why I use this gun movement. And actually, I don't have a good reason. Um, on bigger panels, I don't traditionally do this. Uh, and like other like less complicated parts, I definitely don't. Uh, there's no negative to doing it this way, so I'm not sure why anybody would possibly care. But, you know, it's the internet. All right, got the kachow down on all these parts, including this derby cover here. which is going to be the first stage before we do the black numbers. And I actually don't know what these are. I'm sure some of you motorcycle people know what part of the engine this is. Um, I actually have no idea. I don't know anything about motorcycles. I just tend to try to make them pretty. And I've always just uh, done really well with that. So never had to learn much about them. If you know what this is, let me know down in the comments so I can figure it out for next time. So I don't sound like an idiot in the next video. Obviously, you guys have seen me tape a ton of different things. Um, this is no different other than you might notice that I'm using blue tape and I actually haven't been using amber tape in most of my recent videos. Uh, I started to really like this blue tape um, as far as how easy it is to cut, uh, how well it conforms to things, and how easy it is to pull off at any temperature. Um, I use green tape still occasionally. I'm sure you guys will see it in this video and have seen it in some of the last couple, but I think I like this blue tape more than the amber. Here we go, throwing some more kachow down. Um, I think I had like three racks of parts in total, uh, including the wheels, all in kachow. Um, this job is mostly kachow and uh, tigers, wet black. I think there was only like four pieces in wet black. And honestly, now that I think about it, I don't even think I showed them in this video or show me coating any of the gloss black stuff in this video. But the kachow stuff looks cool, which you'll see here in just a minute. These wheels were brand new inbox uh, chrome wheels, and uh, blasting them worked pretty well. I uh, didn't have any real issues. Like I said in the past, if you're gonna blast chrome, at least make sure it's new chrome. I traditionally won't blast old chrome just because the way it peels and bubbles and tears up in big sheets. I don't wanna have to deal with that and try to make my work look good over top of that. But these ones were brand new. Uh, they blasted just fine. There was only one area that kind of bubbled up a little bit and it actually did that in uh, the curing process and then it was pretty small probably the size of a pencil eraser maybe or maybe a little bit smaller and it was down tight in between one of the spokes so not noticeable the customer didn't seem to mind and like any other of the jobs that I do same rules uh, spray all the difficult areas first the tight corners first and then work your way out around the outside um, that process hasn't changed I've pretty much been doing that for all what 14 years that I've been powder coating now. 
The customer originally was just going to go with Kachow and Gloss Black. I actually had to talk him into doing a clear over this color. Um, it doesn't require a clear. It doesn't say anything on Prismatic's side about it. It says that it might last longer with a clear. And I actually think this particular one of the Prismatic Flakes looks significantly better with a clear over it. Some of the other ones that are similar to this actually look worse when you put a clear over them for some reason. You can see even here, I'm using like long strokes. I'm not doing that kind of wrist flick thing that I know some of you seem to really dislike. Uh, like I said, it just depends on the part I'm coding or the shape of the part or which part of the part I'm coding even. And this is Kachow after curing. Uh, now we're ready for some clear vision. Program 2, ready for the second coat. No idea why I was just about to change it right there. And if you know anything about me or you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I love prismatic flakes or really just any flakes or sparkles of any kind. Um, I get made fun of all the time because I like all this wild stuff, but it's hard to do gloss black and matte black and satin black all day. When you get to do cool stuff like this, it definitely makes the job way more fun. Now we're throwing some clear vision on everything. Hey, if you guys have made it this far, you're about halfway through the video. If you don't mind, uh, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button, turn on all notifications, especially if you like powder coating content. I'm trying to put out a video a day for the rest of the year. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off, but I'm going to be real close. I have like six videos right in a row, and that'll get me right near the end of the year, obviously, but maybe not quite to it. I'm always curious what people's favorite colors are. I know in the past in videos I've asked for you guys to post your favorite color down in the comments, but do that again. Um, I'm always curious. I always, uh, I think one of the last times I asked somebody posted a color that I'd never heard of, and when I went and looked, I was like, oh, this is actually a great color, and I actually ordered some for myself to try doing some sample projects with and see what it looked like in person. So let me know what your favorite color is down in the comments. Uh, of course Kachow with clear vision you can see I feel like it makes the color on this pop a lot more it's definitely a lot more vibrant for some reason and obviously it's slightly glossier Every time I look at this color, I like it more. Um, obviously, Prismatic has a bunch of different flakes like this, or different uh, blacks like this, with this flake in it. Um, each one is a little bit different. I mean, they're all pretty similar, and if you couldn't have put them side by side, they're probably nearly identical. But I love all this stuff. I love all the, the variance in color that this creates. And um, you know, this is not in great lighting. I can't wait to see this out in the sun and on the motorcycle. I think it's gonna look pretty spectacular. The wheels obviously are going to be what pops the most, especially on a bike like this. Um, I assume the rest of this bike has a ton of gloss black or something similar to that, but these wheels are going to stand out like crazy in sunlight.
since I keep getting people asking me what my gun settings are, I'm actually going to post a short uh, the day after this video is posted. Uh, it'll be a video showing my settings for program one and two, which is basically all I use. Um, I might make some changes within those, but I usually just set them back at the end of the day. And as you can see, the wheels turned out great. Super glossy, super vibrant, ton of color. I absolutely cannot wait to see these on the motorcycle, especially in the sun. Okay, don't make fun of me. I left tape right there for some reason. No idea why. Super tacky. My apologies. Alright, now on to the two-tone part of this. Uh, these numbers, the 114 here, the little outline, that all has to be done in gloss black. So, we're going to be spraying some powder on, uh, doing the wiping process that you guys have seen in the past. This is a little bit different just because they're recessed. Um, but ultimately the same as other projects you've seen me do in the past where I just wipe away the excess powder. So you can see I'm doing that here. No special tools. Uh, probably could have vacuumed away some of this. Uh, I didn't. I ended up just pushing it off onto the desk and kind of getting it out of there. Uh, it's a pretty time-consuming process. I mean, this probably took me 10 minutes start to finish. Uh, I was pretty nitpicky about it. Just kind of went through and wiped all the edges, made sure everything was out of all the pole holes. Um, went over it probably three times that I thought I was finished and then started over, or not started over, but saw some stuff I missed and had to go back and go over it. But I'm kind of picky about stuff like this. Ultimately, it's worth it because your customer will see it and be in love. And there it is after color, or after curing. Uh, this is before the clear. But I like that it it's subtle, but it still kind of pops on the bike. This is the other thing I'm doing. Uh, the outside ring of this is going to be in gloss black, and then the center of this will be in kachow. So I shot the whole thing in Tiger's uh, wet black. Uh, throw it in to cure it, or get it flowed out at least, not cure it. Uh, once that cools down, I'm going to put kachow on the whole thing, and then wipe the outside edges, uh, so only the center is in kachow. I'm probably explaining that to you in this video. But I realized that me voicing it over is way better than listening to all the fan for the ducting and stuff for the booth as well as any music that I might be playing in the background while I work. Alright, then once I got a, a good coat of kachow on there, I'm going to go ahead and just wipe away all that outside edge. I have a hard line to work off of, um, so I didn't use tape or anything loud like that. It's just as easy to wipe all this down, let it fall to the ground. Um, especially when it's sitting up at an angle like this, all of it literally just drops down. Then I throw it into the oven to cure, or flash out the kachow at least. And then uh, I'll end up throwing some clear vision on this so it matches all the rest of the parts. Is both of the parts right here that are Kachow and uh, Tiger's Wet Black. A little clear vision and they'll be done. Once again, guys, if you like uh, powder coating content or tutorials or anything like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you could give this video a like, that would be absolutely spectacular. You know, likes keep us up in the algorithm and make sure that other people get the chance to see these videos as well. Thanks again for all your support, guys. I uh, look forward to the next video.